Hi everybody. This is a very special week because we explore a bacteria with a long association in humans, the bacteria that causes tuberculosis. We usually can't afford to spend a whole week on a single type of bacteria, but this one illustrates so many topics that we've already covered. It seems like a good opportunity to review and apply what we've learned. For example, we've learned that some microbes are very resistant to disinfection and antisepsis, and mycobacterium species are definitely one of those groups because of their waxy mycolic acid coats. TB is one of the hardest diseases to sanitize against unless high-level control methods are used. We've learned that a true antibiotic comes from a microbe, and the first antibiotic effective against tuberculosis came from a genus of bacteria called Streptomyces. Streptomyces is very common in soil. It actually accounts for that smell of dirt. The first antibiotic against TB was named streptomycin. This is a heartbreaking story for me because the graduate student who did all the work and made the discovery got nothing. No credit, no money, and no Nobel Prize. See what you think from the videos and the article I posted. I could have listed many more scientists here, but I will just remind you that Robert Koch discovered that this one bacteria causes the disease tuberculosis. So it fits his postulates really well. One bacteria causes one disease. Paul Ehrlich, the scientist who was such an expert in dyes, perfected the acid fast stain and contracted TB for his trouble. He wound up going to Egypt to try to recover. The American most involved with tuberculosis research was Edward Trudeau, another physician who eventually contracted and died from this disease. But he started the first TB sanatoriums in the United States. We will study antibiotic resistance more, but one of the reasons that TB continues to be such a killer worldwide is for a variety of reasons. Many people who die of TB have no money to pay for antibiotics. Sometimes they can buy medications sporadically, but they can't take enough medication for long enough to totally eliminate the infection. So that simply leads to more resistant strains of tuberculosis. And there aren't a lot of antibiotics that work against mycobacteria to start with because they can't get through the cell wall. You will get to see this bacteria by going through the AFB lab, which will show you all the steps involved in making a slide, staining it, and then viewing it. Technically, mycobacteria is gram positive, but the gram stain doesn't work because of that waxy coating. That's why we need an alternate stain, the acid fast. Once you've watched all the videos, which are very short, there's a 10 point quiz. But like all the lab quizzes, you get two attempts to make a perfect score. There's a vaccine that's been used to prevent TB for almost 100 years, the BCG but it isn't given in the United States because the immunity it generates is not thought to be high enough. But it does stimulate immunity of a general fashion, which is intriguing. The discussion board asks you to consider an interesting question regarding protecting yourself against COVID-19. Would you rather take an old vaccine that is well studied and considered very safe or a new vaccine with very little data to support it. There's also a test for TB that measures the body's reaction when a bit of protein from the tubercle bacillus is injected right under the skin. That's called the PPD. The swelling and hardness that appears 48 hours later is a hyperimmune response, showing that the person has antibodies to mycobacterium, either because they took the vaccine or they've been exposed to TB. But this opens the door to a new discussion, chronic diseases that the immune system cannot clear. We'll be studying that further in the weeks ahead. 
Our Teach the Class activity is our fourth quiz on systemic pathogens. Go through the presentation, print out the slides to help you, and then take the quiz. This was one of my favorite weeks to design for you, so I hope you enjoy it. And it is no accident that we are studying tuberculosis the week of Halloween. If you want to know why, watch the video on Mercy Brown. Bye, everybody.